Okay folks, uh, Derek here with Code 3 Safety. Uh, once again, we're going to delve into the particulars or the specifics of the extinguishers that you see here on this table. Uh, and we're going to build on the knowledge that I gave you in the first video, which was a rough overview of the types of materials or classifications of fire and some of the extinguishment agents used to combat those fires. Here, I'm going to go into more detail and we're going to talk about these three separate agents as well as a couple of others that I do not have here on this table. So let's start first with the dry cam, dry powder, uh, all-purpose uh, type extinguisher. Again, this is what you have in Portland Public Schools for the most part. You have these in all businesses hanging on the walls. This one here is the most prolific, uh, the most popular extinguisher. This is what's required by the International Fire Code and Portland, uh, Portland Fire Bureau uh, when they come out and do inspections of the average business. This is called a five pound dry chemical uh, or dry powder fire extinguisher. It is rated, as you can see, for class A, B, and C fires. You can also see on the label in yellow, A, B, and C. This is a multi-purpose, multi-purpose dry chem extinguisher used for class A, B, and C fires. Now, it's important to know the capabilities or the limitations as well on these types of extinguishers or these different sizes. Again, this is a five pound extinguisher. If you look at the UL label right here, okay, underneath the UL label, the certification label, is the rating of this particular extinguisher. This extinguisher is rated as a 2A 10BC. Now, what exactly does that mean? It's important, okay, it's important that you know this so you know if you can engage a fire successfully and you have a chance of putting it out or you should just evacuate your building or the area that you're in. So this is important to know. The 2A10BC means that it's equivalent to exactly two and a half gallons of water for a class A type fire. Again, those are building materials, pallets, dumpsters, also plastic and rubber. You have roughly two and a half gallons of water equivalency in this standard five pound dry chem. For the B, the 10B means 10 square feet for a flammable or combustible liquid. For instance, if we have a car in this parking lot that is leaking gas, that somehow hits an ignition point, and now we have a fire underneath the vehicle, you can only put out roughly 10 square feet of that flammable liquid that's on the, or underneath the vehicle. That's roughly three feet by three feet. So by the time you get this extinguisher out from your building, and use it on a fire, you'll quickly be overwhelmed by the amount of fire. So be very, very careful when using a smaller five pound type extinguisher for a class B fire. Again, 10 square feet. It also puts out a class C, which is an electrical fire. And the class C fire has no numerical rating. It's either appropriate for putting out a class C fire or it is not. It is appropriate for a class C fire. Again, most popular is the five pound, we step down to what you may have at home, which are the two and a half pound extinguishers. These are really, in my professional opinion, not recommended even in the home environment. By the time you see the fire, you have someone call 911 or you call 911 and you combat the fire. By this point, the fire will already have overwhelmed your capability in terms of quantity of agent to put out that fire. This is a 1A 5BC. Roughly one gallon of water, that's your equivalency, not much at all, and only five square feet for a flammable liquid. Very, very ineffective. I would start at the five pound. Then you can go to the 10 pound. The 10 pound, again, ABC, multi-purpose. This one here is rated as a 4A ADB. So it gives you the equivalency of five gallons of water and 80 square feet. So roughly nine feet by nine feet. If you're going to engage that car fire, I would not do it with less than a 10 pound dry chem extinguisher. And then finally, we go to the big guy here. This is the 20 pound dry chem. Very hard to use, very heavy. It's more than 20 pounds. It only contains 20 pounds of powder. And this goes up to 
8 to 10A and 120 square feet for the flammable liquid. So it's an 8 or 10A, 120BC extinguisher. That's dry chem. From here, we go to the traditional water can. Now this water can looks just like the 20 pound dry chem. The same rough size, roughly the same weight. The problem with the water can is it's only used for class A because it only contains water. So for class A fires, this only has two and a half gallons of water. So this huge can, which is the size of the largest dry chem extinguisher, only has the equivalency of roughly this five pound, very easy to use dry chem or dry powder extinguisher. Again, the five pound extinguisher is equivalent for a class A fire to the much larger A class water can. Okay. Now I'm going to go over here to the wet chem extinguisher for the class A and K. This extinguisher here, again, is for class A fires, class K fires. The nice thing about this is, again, used in kitchens, this has an actual discharge time of 53 seconds by spec. These are much less. The dry chems that you'll see in most businesses only have a discharge time of roughly 15 seconds. This has a discharge time of close to a minute. The Class A, it has the equivalent of roughly two gallons of water. And the Class K, again, you have a discharge of almost a minute. And this puts out a fair amount of kitchen uh, grease fire. Okay, this is a Class A and K. This is potassium acetate. It forms a soapy film on the grease. It is very, very effective, the most effective in kitchen fires. This is called a Class K. Finally, let's finish up with carbon dioxide and halotron. Carbon dioxide extinguishers are class B and C, and they range in their numerical ratings depending on the size of extinguisher that you get for a carbon dioxide or a halotron extinguisher. The carbon dioxide and the halotron are used specifically and most effectively in class C electrical fires. These are extinguishers that should be used in server rooms, uh, electrical panels uh, with appliances, etc. Again, on Class C, but they are also effective with flammable and combustible liquids. Again, carbon dioxide and halotron. They are non conductive as well. And so, uh, with the dry chem, this can be conductive, so you have to be somewhat careful about where you use it. With the carbon dioxide and the halotron, non conductive agent. Uh, however, the danger with the halotron and carbon dioxide is that if you're in a closed, confined space, it does reduce the amount of oxygen, so you have to be careful and evacuate from that server room or that electrical breaker room when you do use the carbon dioxide and the halotron. So that's a little more specifically on the types of extinguishers and the numerical ratings to allow you to uh, make a smart decision about whether to engage the fire and if you have enough firepower and you can get enough wet stuff on the red stuff or if you should just completely abandon the idea of extinguishment and evacuate to your muster points and establish accountability for your staff. Thank you.